In today's video, we're going to talk about rate limiting, which was introduced in .NET 7, and I'm going to show you a more advanced use case of rate limiting a user based on their IP address. Rate limiting is a technique for limiting the number of requests to your API, and it's mainly used to improve the security of your application by limiting the number of requests from malicious users. Another benefit of using rate limiting is to reduce the load on your server if you are encountering too many requests on your API. To enable rate limiting in your API, you need to do two things. The first is to call the add rate limiter method and configure the rate limiter options. We're going to do that in just a moment. And the second thing is to introduce the rate limiter middleware by calling app use rate limiter. With these two calls, we have rate limiting enabled on the API level, and now we need to configure the rate limit policies that we want to use and which endpoints we want to apply them on. The rate limit options are our entry point for configuring rate limiting on the application level. We have access to the global rate limiter. If you want to enable rate limiting on all of your endpoints, this is something that might be useful in some specific scenarios, but I generally don't think you should be doing this. Usually you want to apply more granular rate limiting on the specific endpoints and definitely based on who is calling your API. Out of the box, we have four distinct rate limit algorithms implemented, the concurrency, fixed window, sliding window, and token bucket limiters. Let's use a simple one for the example, which is the fixed window limiter. To configure this limiter, we need to define a policy name. Let's call it the fixed policy and we need to configure the fixed window rate limiter options. So this object contains quite a bit of values that are relevant for our fixed window rate limiter. The ones we want to focus on are the permit limit, which determines the number of requests that are available in this fixed window. Let's say we want to allow 10 requests. And then what is the actual fixed window length? Well, you can configure that by setting the window property and let's give it some simple value like a time span from seconds and let's say 10 seconds. This would be a rate limit policy that allows you to send 10 requests to the API in 10 seconds. How do we use a rate limit policy? Well, we need to apply it. So let's find some suitable endpoint. For example, the endpoint for getting all of the products in our database. Let's say that this endpoint has a performance penalty and we don't want to allow malicious users to abuse it and crash our API. We're going to enable the fixed window rate limiter on this endpoint by calling the require rate limit method and we're going to provide it the policy name of fixed. And now the rate limit policy that we have configured here is going to be applied on our endpoint when the API is running. The fixed window policy that we configured as it stands now isn't going to be particularly useful because it's going to be applied to all users of your API. What we need to do is to define a rate limit policy that's going to partition the users based on the IP address. So we're going to say options, add policy, and then we can give it a policy name. Let's say fixed like we have below because I want to replace the global fixed window limiter with this one which is going to be scoped to the IP address of the user. Now I need to provide a delegate which is going to take in an HTTP context instance and it's going to return a rate limit partition with a given partition key. How you can do this is by calling the rate limit partition class which has some methods that allow you to get back a rate limit partition and we want to get a fixed window limiter. So now we need to provide what is the partition key for this partition and how we're going to get a partition key is from our HTTP context. We're going to access the connection property and then on it we should have the remote IP address. Let's say we want to convert this into a string so that this represents our connection string. And then we need to provide a factory which is going to get access to the partition value which is going to be our IP address but that isn't relevant and we need to return a new fixed window rate limiter options instance. And we basically just want to set the same properties as we had before. So let's say the permit limit is 10 and the window property should have a value of time span from 
seconds and let's say 10 seconds. So this should enable us to send 10 requests to the API in 10 seconds. Now I can get rid of the global fixed window rate limiter and I'm going to use my partitioned one on my get products endpoint. Because we aren't using the partition parameter in this function, we can discard it and simplify this like so. One more thing I like to configure on my rate limiter is the rejection status code. I like to use the 429 too many requests as the default status code because I think it makes more sense for a rate limit error. The default value is 503 service unavailable. So let's try out our rate limited get products endpoint. I'm sending a request to our API from Postman and we are hitting the get products endpoint which has a rate limit policy applied. I placed a breakpoint here just to illustrate what's going on and if we take a look at the remote IP address value you can see the value that will be used as our partition key for the fixed window rate limiter. The user with this IP address will be able to send 10 requests to the API in the fixed window and if they hit the rate limit, they'll be getting a 429 too many requests. So I'm going to remove this breakpoint and hit continue. And we see the response back in Postman. Let's keep sending the request to the API until we hit the rate limit. So if I keep going and I keep going and eventually I should send 10 requests in 10 seconds and hit the rate limit, which is right now. And now we have the 429 too many requests response. So now if I wait a few moments until the fixed window moves, which is only 10 seconds, I should refresh the rate limit and have another 10 requests, which you can see is going on. So this is request 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now I should hit the rate limit, which you can see is working as expected. And we're getting back a 429 too many requests response. Rate limiting a user based on their IP address could be practical if you're building some application which has usage-based billing and you only want to allow a certain number of requests based on the package that the user is subscribed to. Now, what if the user is accessing your application from different IP addresses? Well, you can just change the partition key from the remote IP address to user identity and then grab the name property the identity name value should match the subclaim of the user if your api requires the user to be authenticated which should be the case anyhow then you're just going to apply the rate limit based on the partition key which is the user identifier this is always going to be the same value for the one user regardless of the ip address they are using to connect to your api if you want to learn more about rate limiting in .NET, you should watch this video next where I cover the fundamentals of the rate limiting algorithms that are available. Thanks for watching this video and until next time, stay awesome.